The college football season is well and truly underway, but with many of the top teams still to kick off, we have a couple more precious days to lock in our preseason picks and bets. Of course, one of the most hotly debated subjects in all of college football is its greatest individual prize, the Heisman Trophy. The Heisman is the one prize that launches guys into the stratosphere, and there's no shortage of star power this year. But with the debate raging in what's quickly becoming a two-horse race, everyone's looking for an edge. And that's got us wondering, can we predict the Heisman Trophy winner? We're going to discuss some criteria that past Heisman winners have had and try to see if that helps us predict future Heisman winners. So a couple things to note. We're only going to be using the Heisman winners starting from 2014, the beginning of the college football playoff. It's a small sample size compared to the rest of history of Heisman winners, but the playoff has changed the game so completely that we feel like it's not fair to compare Heisman winners from before the playoff to Heisman winners now. So we'll be talking about Marcus Mariota, Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, Baker Mayfield, and Kyler Murray, the entire list of Heisman winners during the playoffs. Let's get a couple things out of the way. First of all, yes, it benefits you to be a quarterback. Yes, it benefits you to play in a major conference. We're not gonna discuss those because we know those already. Let's start here. To win the Heisman, you have to be on one of the top two teams in the college football playoffs, unless you're Lamar Jackson. Every other winner was either the number one or the number two team in the college football playoffs. However, only one of them, which was Derrick Henry on 2015, actually won the college football playoff with his team. Here's the important one. To be a Heisman winner, you have to account for at least 60% of your team's offense as long as you're a quarterback. Let's go through year by year. Marcus Mariota accounted for 64% of Oregon's high-powered offense in 2014. Derrick Henry, uh, he was only 36% of Alabama's offense, but he led the country in rush attempts, rush yards, total touchdowns, and points. So that's mostly a disparity between how involved running backs and quarterbacks are. Lamar Jackson was 74% of Louisville's offense. Three out of every four yards Louisville gained was because of Lamar Jackson, which probably accounts for the reason why he won it, even in a year where Louisville didn't even make the college football playoffs. The year after, Baker Mayfield was 61% of Oklahoma's offense. That's the lowest of any quarterback to win the Heisman since the college football playoff. And finally, Kyler Murray was 67% of Oklahoma's offense in 2018. To win a Heisman, you have to be an efficient workhorse for your team. Let me explain what I mean. Guys who win the Heisman do a lot for their team, and that shouldn't come as a surprise to you. But it's the way in which they do it that's so important. They're efficient, not just volume. To give you an example, Washington State under Mike Leach runs that air raid offense. Their quarterbacks throw a lot. And very often over the last five years, you see Washington State quarterbacks leading in pass attempts, pass completions maybe, and pass yards. However, none of them are even close to the Heisman. Now, a part of that is probably because, as I mentioned before, Washington State is not in the college football playoff picture or even in the top 10. But really it's because Heisman voters prioritize efficiency over volume. And that's what you see throughout the history of the award. Let's start with Marcus Mariota, 2014. Led the country in pass yards per attempt, quarterback efficiency, total yards, yards per play, touchdowns responsible for. This is a pattern here. Derrick Henry the next year, as I mentioned, led the country in rush attempts, rush yards, total touchdowns, and points. Baker Mayfield led the country in completion percentage, efficiency, yards per attempt, yards per play, touchdowns responsible for. Kyler Murray led the country in pass yards per attempt, total yards, yards per play, and touchdowns responsible for. So you see a lot of leaders in total yards, things like that. But it's the leaders in yards per attempt, yards per play, efficiency. That's what we're looking for here. That's what Heisman voters like. They like guys that don't turn the ball over, 
and that are efficient when they have it. They lead their team down the field and they score. Guys that average 10 plus yards per attempt, yards per play. That's what Heisman voters like. Now what they also like when it comes to quarterbacks is running quarterbacks, dual threat guys, which makes sense. I mentioned earlier about how uh, most Heisman winners made up a significant chunk of their team's offense. A big reason for that is because not only do these quarterbacks throw every pass play, when they run with it, they also account for those yards. No quarterback in the history of the Heisman since the college football playoff has rushed for fewer than 600 yards in a season. So obviously they're gonna account for a, for a large percentage. That is going to come up later though as we discuss the 2019 Heisman race. The 2019 race is, as I mentioned, is quickly becoming a two-horse type of race. Tua Tagovailoa from Alabama, Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. These two guys, betting-wise, have a massive lead over the rest of the field. So let's focus on these two. Let's start with Tua. Last season, he was number one in the country in pass efficiency, second in pass yards per attempt and yards per play, seventh in total yards, fourth in touchdowns responsible for. Trevor Lawrence was not in the top 10 in any of these categories. I'm gonna to get to that in a second, but here's what we should know. A lot of those categories I just mentioned that Tua is successful in are the same categories past Heisman winners led in, and that helped in their Heisman campaign. Tua accounted for 53% of Alabama's offense last year. Trevor Lawrence accounted for 44% of Clemson's total offense. In addition to that, Clemson running back Travis Etienne is coming back nearly 1,700 yards and 24 touchdowns on the ground from last year. Most people believe he's only gonna get better this season. For Tua, however, Alabama's top two running backs are gone, Damian Harris and Joshua Jacobs. But their top two receivers, Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs, they're back. Tua is going to have to shoulder more of the offensive burden, but he's going to be able to do it with his two favorite targets. There is something we should note here though. Trevor Lawrence didn't start the first four games of his freshman season at Clemson last year. Clemson's offense got better by about three points a game once he took over from Kelly Bryant. So what we're looking at here is an established entity in Tua, as much as you can be established after only a year and change as a starter, versus Trevor Lawrence, who started only nine games in his freshman year, including the college football playoffs, but won every single one of them and was part of the, the nation's most prolific offense going into the college football playoffs. You're looking at the known versus the unknown. But for the purposes of this video, we have to talk about the known, and the known is Tua Tagovailoa. He's more efficient, he gets more usage than Lawrence, at least we assume he will, and he represents a bigger threat on the ground. 200 yards, five touchdowns last season. It's not in the Kyler Murray, Marcus Mariota level of being a threat on the ground, but he gets into the end zone and he at least is solid on his feet. Trevor Lawrence is not so much. 170 yards, one touchdown last season. You could give a, an outside shot to Jake Fromm from Georgia. He led the country in pass touchdowns last year and he's gonna get Tua-like usage in that offense. But Fromm is zero threat on the ground. Trevor Lawrence is an incredible talent entering just his sophomore season. What he was able to do with Clemson's offense once he took over was almost unprecedented for a freshman. Tua is losing his top two running options from last season, and even though it's a revolving door of running backs at Alabama, it takes him a little while to get involved. Trevor Lawrence has his main running threat back, and a guy who probably should be getting a lot of usage because you're looking at potentially an 1,800 to 2,000 yard guy in college, which is unbelievable. The betting man would probably say that Tua Tagovailoa is the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. While winning the college football championship is a debate focused around every aspect of the game, it does seem pretty cut and dry that the numbers suggest that Tua is going to be the favorite. But if following college football for years has taught us anything, it's that the numbers don't ever tell the full story.